You know, I was gonna come on here and bag on Miraculous Ladybug for yet another time paradox that I noticed in Cat Blanc, and I was so ready to do that. But before making a fool of myself, I watched a quick 30 second clip, with the sound off of course, because I wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally watch the show properly. I watched the 30 second clip to confirm the paradox, and to my surprise, the paradox that I thought existed didn't exist, and the show actually addressed it. So kudos to you, Miraculous Ladybug, you got something right. However, you're not off the hook, because after revisiting that thought a week later, I discovered there is a paradox in that exact same scene. It's just a different paradox, and it's kind of messed up. So at the end of Cat Blanc, the ladybug that went to the future to stop the past, yeah, I don't know, time traveling rules in this show don't make sense. Check out my past two videos about this. The ladybug that quote unquote fixed everything went back to the past and stopped a third ladybug from writing her name on Adrian's present to prevent the bad future. She then does Miraculous Ladybug and then it happens. The brutal erasure of a sentient, full of life soul, ladybug number three. She was just living her best life and then out of nowhere gets pushed out of the way by herself, gets her romantic plans foiled, and then a moment later, she doesn't exist anymore. Super messed up, right? But that's not the paradox. The paradox is that the second ladybug gets to survive. Like, how does that work? Ladybug number two's past doesn't exist anymore, so neither should she? Story-wise, I know she has to exist so that Marinette can be traumatized, but it doesn't make sense. Ladybug number three should be the one who stays existing, just in reality where she never wrote her name. At best, Ladybug number two could warn number three that something bad would happen if Adrian found out her identity accidentally and just left it vague. In that case, Mari can keep her paranoia and there won't be a paradox. Writers, please attempt to make sense with your time rules. I'm begging you. So let's talk about the season four finale. Hello everyone, my name's Ayla Bell, and the major events of Risk and Strike Back have been made known to me. I don't know all of the details, but I know just enough to comment on it. I want to give a quick shout out to Klogami on Instagram for inspiring this video with a recent comic of hers. You should totally check her out as she makes funny comics about Chloe's mom Audrey and other miraculous stuff. And before we get into the juicy stuff, if you're enjoying this video so far, please be a hero and give it a thumbs up. It'll really help to spread my channel to more people. And if you're still watching, comment with either a clock or bunny emoji. Thank you! Anyway, looks like Miraculous finally wants to get serious and do something exciting that'll move the plot along. Great! I applaud them doing something major with Hawk Moth and finally putting his arc in the endgame. It's like two seasons late, but at least we got there. But Allo, what does any of this have to do with time travel and paradoxes that you discussed in your intro? Shh, we'll get there. Once again, Ladybug's crush on Adrian has gotten her into trouble by having her accidentally give the dog Miraculous to Felix, who then turned around and gave Gabriel access to every Miraculous in her possession, except for the cat and Ladybug. Oh, Mari, if you don't have some relationship development and deal with this crush now, you might very well destroy us all. And I gotta say, not the most dignified way for us as a species to end. Memorable, but mighty shameful. Anyway, we're left on a cliffhanger. Gabriel has almost all of the miraculous that Mari was in charge of. What's gonna happen next? Well, if this were realistic, what would happen next is... Game over. Ladybug and Cat Noir lost. They lost. It's the end. Roll credits. I gotta say, it was risky making a children's show in which the bad guy wins, but hey, I don't personally think it's a good message to teach, but it is what it is. I wish Zag and Thomas Astruck all the luck in the world for their next show. Wait, what? The show isn't over. There's actually gonna be a season five. What do you mean there's gonna be a season five? Like, a full season season? Yeah, they are. Seriously? How? All right. Jokes aside, Gabriel should be the winner here. He has the bunny miraculous now, and he knows how it works. He has two options here. Use Burrow to discover the identities of Ladybug and Cat Noir and use that knowledge to get the miraculous, 
Or he can rewrite history entirely and go back in time to before his wife got into her coma death and prevent her from using the peacock miraculous or whatever happened to her. That's probably what happened to her. Anyway, heck, he could stop their past selves from even finding the miraculous. If his goal is to bring back his wife, he has the literal key in the form of a pocket watch. Whoever has the bunny miraculous wins this war. And I don't want anyone to tell me that Bunnix wouldn't allow this because her interfering wouldn't make any sense. It didn't make sense then, it doesn't make sense now. If the timeline we are currently watching is the true timeline, then if Gabriel used the bunny miraculous to change the past, then Bunnix wouldn't exist in the future. And they can't pull the whole Bunnix came back to fix a mistake that was never supposed to happen thing again because that would be lazy writing. The writers shot themselves in the foot when they not only introduced time travel in this show, but also when time travel is easy to access for anyone who has the Bunny Miraculous. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The Bunny Miraculous is overpowered. Gabriel wins. The fact that there is a season 5 is honestly kind of insulting, because if Gabriel's first instinct isn't to literally change the events that led to this madness, then my suspension of disbelief is truly broken without repair. And if they do pull something and somehow get Bunnix to fix all of this, or at the very least make her get the Bunny Miraculous back from Gabriel, then I'm sorry, there are officially no stakes in this show. There already kind of wasn't specifically because of the Bunny Miraculous and the quote unquote guaranteed future that she comes from, but if she's the reason why everything goes back to being fine, then what even is the point? What's the point of anything here? What's the point of trying? Gabriel should honestly just give up because the universe is against him. If it weren't, he would have gotten the bunny miraculous before the heroes did. Honestly, if Gabriel doesn't immediately use the bunny miraculous in the first episode of season 5, I can no longer take him seriously as a villain. Not that he scored that high to begin with, but you know. whoop de doo the love square is finally reversing, maybe. Who freaking cares? Nothing matters. <sighs> Do you know why time travel works better in other shows or movies? I'm not saying it's ever perfectly executed, but most of the time, unless the show is specifically highlighting the opposite for the gimmick of the premise, the act of being able to travel through time isn't easily accessible. Usually a complex series of events needs to happen so that characters can't spam this ability, or something is an obstacle preventing spamming this ability. You can't just do it whenever. There are a few exceptions in which characters can freely go through time, but that's usually when the show is about time travel and visiting different time periods to have adventures and stuff. Most of the time, however, and especially when the show isn't exclusively about time travel, when time travel is introduced, it is not easy to have or keep around. And in the few cases where it is easy to access, but the show or movie isn't centered around time travel, time travel usually has consequences that make it a less appealing option. These reasons, mixed with establishing fairly constant rules as to which time traveling theory you're working with, helps to create stakes as well as an interesting story. Miraculous Ladybug does none of these and just goes for whatever will make their story cool. Come with May as far as logic goes, or lack thereof. Time travel is too easy to access. The consequences of using it are vague to non-existent, remember, Bunnick said that bad things can happen if you mess with time, but we haven't seen these bad things happen, so why should we believe her? And the time travel theory at play is inconsistent. Now, little kids watching this show probably won't catch on to these problems. I probably, no, I likely wouldn't either if I were a kid watching the show. I'm super analytical and picky because of years of directly and indirectly learning proper storytelling. In trying to better my own storytelling, I can't help but watch shows and movies in a certain way sometimes. That isn't to say that I can't turn my brain off when needed. If a show is entertaining and keeps my suspension of disbelief, I'm able to enjoy myself and mostly ignore the problems. Heck, maybe I won't even initially notice the problems. But when a problem is so big and annoying, I can't let it go because it's ruining the experience for me and I just end up sitting there festering in a puddle of annoyance and disappointment. Don't get me wrong, there is value in learning what not to do, and we sometimes need those real life examples in order to grow. So, while I appreciate that valuable life lesson, at the end of the day, I'm still annoyed. Miraculous Ladybug annoys me for several reasons. I won't list them all as I have spoken quite a bit of my displeasure in past videos. 
I will give it to Miraculous that it has inspired my creativity and I'm thankful that God has introduced me to it because if he hadn't, I don't think my channel would have taken off so quickly. So, I am truly grateful to Thomas Astruck and Zag and everyone involved with this show. Regardless of things any of them have done or said, and regardless if I agree with choices that have been made, I am grateful. God has been good to me through Miraculous Ladybug. Having said that, this show could be so much more. I bag on it because I see its potential and one of my pet peeves is when stories I consume or know about don't live up to their potential or if they don't properly develop something that was being built up to. I recognize that no story will ever be perfect and I don't expect every show to cater to my headcanons and whims. I just want things to make sense, align with my morals, and have satisfying closure. Miraculous already has things that don't make sense, so I'm not confident about its eventual closure. Many people like this show and think it's a fun time, and some don't even notice the problems. To those people, I say, I'm glad you're enjoying the ride. Please don't let people like me or others take that joy from you. But to the many of you who have detected the faults of the show and continue to watch it, to those who love it but acknowledge it as problems, and to those who used to love it but don't anymore, I am so sorry for how this journey has gone. I'm watching the ride from a distance with my HD binoculars, but you guys are experiencing it. You guys are strapped in and holding on tight amongst the slow inclines, furiously fast drops, and every turn and loop. I know that whatever decisions get made, you guys are the ones who will be affected, not me, because I refuse to get involved. You could make the argument that I'm already involved, but despite my ranting, I'm nowhere near as emotionally invested as you all are. So, I salute each and every one of you. I'm personally not interested in putting myself through all of that, and I still refuse to do so. Just call me the crazy lady who reviews Miraculous Ladybug without watching the show. At best, I'll maybe watch the Awakening movie when it comes out, purely out of curiosity. Then again, that might kind of break the meme I made for myself, so, you know, we'll see what happens. I can't even guarantee I'm gonna go watch it. That's just a, that's just a loose maybe. But what I will do is I'll continue to absorb the ongoings of this show via Instagram spoilers and fan comics and the occasional skim through the wiki, but that's it. So, after all of that, I can't wait to see how Gabriel won't take advantage of his instant win card and how he'll continue to make dumb decisions that will inevitably lead to his downfall. But what do you guys think? I'm sure many of you have read the episode title list for season 5, so what are you looking forward to? What do you guys think about time travel in this show? Do you think Gabriel will take advantage of it? And what the heck is going on with Felix? And Lila, I guess? Comment below and let's get this conversation started. But as for now, that's all there is. There isn't any more.